We're shuffling. Oh, we, we got our shuffle on, y'all. We got our shuffle on. It's the first of the month. No, <laughs> it's February. We're going to start February off with a, a three-way shuffle, y'all. It's a three-way <laughs> shuffle. Y'all need it. Everybody need it because, you know, January, it was like excitement and tribulation. And then it was like, dang, stuff is getting real thick around here. <laughs> It was the end of Mercury retrograde and all the planets went back direct, but did it really feel like it? Because I've been having technical difficulties ever since. I've been trying to get a box ship for like over 30 days now and having problems with the insurance company and everything online just seems to take forever. And I'm just like, oh my God, what is really happening? But um, yeah, yeah. it's really cool because January... January was the planning phase, and now we're, we're, it's time to start putting those plans into action. We just did vision boards the other day, and um, it's time to come out of the gate and make stuff happen. And, and then by the summertime, I know it's going to be time to actually see all the results of the things that we did. Now, Terry, Terry's got something to say, so I'm going to shut up. I'm just, just going to say, speaking of glitches, my computer is glitching. So if I go off, I'll come back on. It's not, it's just. Um, it, 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 energy going on. Happening. Yeah. I had a Zoom the other day and I kicked the guest off five times. No less than five times. No less. Interesting. Even today, I think. So didn't something happen today, Jonathan? Um. Oh, yeah. It froze. So I. Every, every time it goes. Yes, something like that. And then also, I, I, I kind of was shutting it off. And then I came back in the room, and then boom, I was in two rooms, two, in the room twice. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was in the room twice on the same computer. It was just, it's <laughs> the real something, something. It was this and it's the same over. room. It's, it's not like you room. left one room and then, yeah. I had this book when I was younger, and the girl was tapping her teeth, and she said, Something queer is going on. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how I feel. It's, you know, and oh. DHL called me today, DHL, the shipping company, and even him, he says, all four of my sisters feel the same way. Because I said, it feels like we're swimming through jello. And there goes Terry Glitchin. <laughs> right so, on cue. <laughs> right on cue. Yeah. Call, call you Professor Glitch. So yeah. who wants to go first? We're going to pull a card, each one of us. Just to talk to everybody about the month of February and what they should look forward to. And so we're going to tap into the collective gods just to see what it is that we need to discuss. And I'm pulling my card. Oh my God. <laughs> Mine, mine, my card jumped out as oh, wow. you were just saying you were pulling your card. It was like, oh. I'm going to pull your card, bro. Your card. <laughs> Don't make me pull your card. <laughs> <laughs> Who's going first? Go for it, Ter er, uh, Erica. Okay, I'll go first. So I chose a card from the Angels and Gemstone Guardians. And I like this because it has the crystal on it, but on the back, it has the affirmation. So the card that I chose, I'm gonna change my screen real quick to pin me so you can see the card really well, guys. And um, so here it is, the card, it is so delight. And that's cool because Terry taught me something really cool about soda light. Would you teach me about soda light, Terry? <laughs> I can't remember, Erica. What did I teach you about soda light? Doesn't it turn into something else? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what? You go ahead. You go ahead. What did it say? Uh, lapis Luzi. 
Luzi? Lapis to Lazuli? Lazuli. Yeah, it turns into lapis, right? So it, 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 all the white striations begin to disappear over time. And then you can see the, um, the gold streaks in it, right? But both of them are good for the throat. I know that because I was even told that I need to wear some more of it all the way around my neck. So this is cool. It says, are you experiencing physical inflammations? Do you get headaches or sinus conditions? Is a situation in life inflamed or turbulent? So not only physical inflammation, but mental or spiritual inflammation. Use visual meditation, aromatherapy to calm yourself. Use these tools to experience peace and tranquility, which was so cool because in the last couple of days, or maybe in the last week, I, I hadn't been using my, um, my, my air purifier, humidifier, you know, putting the essential oils in it. And today I was like, wait a minute, maybe that's a part of what's missing. I hadn't been doing that. So I had done it today. So the affirmation is the angel of calmness. I am calm. I am at peace. I am relaxed and all is well. I live in, I Wait a minute, I live a spiritual, peace-filled life. I sing through life on calm, nurturing waters. I enjoy health, free of inflammation. That reminds me of um, something we used to say, like, I am happy, I am healthy, I am healed. But this is a good affirmation that you could put into effect this month. And then use it as a reminder to pick back up those habits that maybe you started, but kind of fell off on, you know, get back to drinking the water like you're supposed to, you know, get rid of some of the junk food and salt in your diet. Maybe, um, you know, get back to walking outside and putting your feet in the grass and grounding and just remembering to, just self-nurture yourself and give yourself a hug, but just to nurture yourself, get back into your salt bath and all those uh, routines we were going to build so that we can make 2023 great. Remember that, do a little bit of rewinds because you're skipping some steps and get back on track because it takes time to make this into a habit and so easily you know, something can hit us, a little bump in the road, hit us and throw us off track. And then we forget where we said we were going to start this year. We forget where we were going. So that's my tip for today with the cards. Thank you. Thank you. So, then, so then I'm going to go next. And uh, the, the cards that I'm working with is um, the wisdom of the Oracle. They're a, a call at Baron Reed. And I selected card 27, which is exchanging gifts. And if you see it, I love this picture. It's a, a fairy and a cat, <laughs> right? <laughs> it's, it's just adorable. It's number 27. Mm -hmm. And it's the, the law of giving and receiving. And man, that you know, how does that go into it? And it's like currency trade-offs weighing costs and determining value. You're entering into a productive and enriching time when all manner of opportunities are being offered to you. You have everything you need to seize them. Yet in order to honor them, you must put in the time, exchange your experience and skills and commit heart and soul to what you're choosing to pursue. You can do it. You have what it takes to be successful if you align with the law of giving and receiving. You must exchange in a dance of give and take, push and pull, doing and being. If you let fear guard, guide your choices, you could deplete yourself or create an imbalance. This is not a time to just do, do, do. You must you're, use your currency wisely and be mindful of the value others bring to your life. And it's like, wow, we just did the whole thing about the vision board. And so this is really so significant 
to just being, you know, as we move into, we've moved past that first month, we're into that second. So it's being mindful of that give and take. What are the gifts that we bring and what do we also receive? How do we flow with people? Um, you know, if we, if you're creating that vision board, just stop and think about all that you have and where you want to go. It's, it's, you know, this is just the coolest card. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. Interesting. Wow. So on all, all of that note, both of your cards, that's quite perfect because what I pulled from the chakra affirmation healing cards is um, it's all about the crown. Wow. Yeah. So that constant flow of that higher, that, that divine, that higher divine energy in, in, I don't know why it's not focusing, but flowing of the right brain and really grounding into your creative self and having that awareness and more of a spiritual understanding with with what you're you're trying to manifest and moving forward through through this month um and allowing yourself to to really connect with you know other you know like you were saying with uh, essential oil and the crystals and you, you know we want to connect with the quartz as well and um you know it is going to be a very, very empathic and a very intense spiritual month to really allow you to express your journey, to know who you are, to really find that path, you know, and in first and foremost, and you want to be just aware of your, your space and a lot, how it, it grounds and to connect with those around you, but first and foremost, how they make you feel. And what are they inspiring you to, to, are they inspiring and mirroring your goals and allowing, allowing you to raise your vibration to achieve that and to receive that, right? That's very interesting because I think, I guess that's just what we're just, we're discussing is how, how much space do we have in our lives? And how many people are we going to cram into our space? I know um, I was always warned as a child to like choose your friends and don't let people just choose you. Because sometimes people will just choose you and, and you don't really understand the gravity of that. You know, we want to have relationships and relationships are important, but we have to choose wisely because what comes with the person is what also the baggage and the energy that they have is what comes along with it. And People can bring a whirlwind into your life that maybe you don't necessarily desire. And you're kind of wondering, like, why am I feeling all out of sorts all of a sudden? Why am I feeling like like I can't be grounded and my life is out of control? But um, we do need to uh, be observant, like you said, of the thought forms and the energies and the people that are flowing into our direction. Really, really, it's really important to choose um, the energy of your space and the tempo, you know, some people have an extremely high tempo and some people have an extremely low tempo. So they can either pull you up or they can pull you down. And I don't mean pull you up as in frequency. I mean, pull you up, unroot you out of the ground and you can lose complete focus on what your plans are, what your goals are. Uh, you can lose awareness of your own identity with that. So I, like I don't my identity. Yeah. Well, I don't want to say identity, but my my space. They interfere with you. Right. Yeah. You know, and and so within this this realm of of your card with the soda soda light and with Terry's Terry's card. Um, what was it again? Hold on. Sharing gifts. Exchanging gifts. So, the, in, so in this space, it's such a spiritual flow of of the, of that seventh that crown chakra, that there's going to be a lot of of shifting and moving around, and you're going to know of these things of which 
is resonant to your path to your for your evolution and and you know when those when those echo chambers or those other places or those people that are having those situations you know your vibe attracts your tribe and your tribe attracts your vibe right so it's going to become more clear because it's going because it's going to be the knowing you're going to have the i know feeling you know it's going to pop in your head and it's going to really resonate with your heart and it's going to settle and then it's going to go back to your throat with your card and you're going to be able to express and navigate ourselves to really receive you know you know what i just thought of too scratching and digging can lead to inflammation right mm-hmm. when you scratch things a little bit too hard and so that is not going with the flow when we just want to dig and dig and, and push and force and and we begin to uproot things and just as we just got through talking to Sal, right? He was talking about dealing with the emotions that are on the surface. Deal with those. You don't have to really dig hard and deep to find these things that, that, that need to be addressed because they're going to flow right to the surface or you can actually cause this inflammation. And I think that goes for you doing that for yourself. But then as any outside forces are trying to dig up into your space and dig into your head and dig all into your feelings and into your background or all these things where people people want a lot from you. And sometimes they want more from you than what you're willing to give or even what you're able to give. And that's their expectations. So you let them have that. Let them deal with that. And you deal with you. Deal with what you're comfortable with. Do not allow people to create inflammation inside of you, right? I'm just going to diverse in this in a way is uh, I've done reflexology for people for many years. And one of the things that when I was learning to do it, you know, it was like, oh, you got to press, you know, like if it hurts there, you got to press harder. And I never... I never went with that. It was like, oh, is that sore? Does that, is that bothering you? Then I would just gently rub it. And it would be amazing that level because our body holds all of that. It was, people would be able to let go of of things because they weren't being aggravated by it. And so, you know, one of the things I found is that, oh, that hurts. And, And what do you do when it hurts? You just like tense up. You're not going to release anything when you're tensed up. It has to be that gentle release and that that just that soothing way of letting it go. And so when we do things like take a salt bath, when we use the essential oils, when we when we nurture ourselves, then it's a way for us to release things in a gentle manner without pushing against it and mm-hmm. and, and aggravating it. And, and, and digging deep and scratching and irritating. We want to be able to release it in a way that is, is honoring it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's like whenever we, they go look for trying to mine minerals or anything like that, it's you're, you're going step, scoop, scoop, layer by layer to get down to the thing right and it's not like it's all of a sudden right you know it's always a step there's always a progression right i like that because what was our our little quote was the the ego wants what it wants change but it doesn't want to do the work (laughs) work. takes time right and the work takes time It's that that whole idea of the of peeling the onion. You pull one layer off, then there's another layer and another layer, you know, like before you get to the heart of it. So, you know, and you, and we often think it's like, oh crap, I thought I'd already dealt with it, but now is there's another layer of it. So we deal with that layer, you know, and it it's going to eventually disappear, but we have to deal with those layers of it. And as they come, we'll deal with that layer. You know, we can't deal with the whole thing. So it comes in layers for us. Mm-hmm. I'm kind of wondering, is this why it felt like the last part of January that I was swimming through jello? It's like, you're just like, oh, come on. <laughs> and, well, yeah, because, because yeah, <laughs> because we, you know, we were priming for this 
this wave of I know of the spiritual flow of kind of like what our mission is, right? Our mission. So, you know, you get to a point, you're like, okay, let's go. I'm ready. Let's do this. But you get to a point, you just have to observe and be ready. <laughs> yeah. Be very fine tuning of the energies around us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that was enough room for us to cut it off. Yeah. Okay. <laughs>